Okay, so welcome to the video. Um, you're gonna see a couple of clips in a second, and I actually forgot on the first clip to make it the start of the video. So you'll see me stoning the table for the fourth axis rotary, and I didn't do any introduction. I'm just straight into what I'm doing. So this is just a quick intro to the video. Um, still going along, still working on it. And as you guys suggested, I'm gonna start from the very start point, which makes sense, of making sure that the fourth axis rotary table is actually square in Y and square in Z. So this is as good as I can get it. So I'll show you the clips now. So before we crack on with everything else, rather than cutting corners and be lazy, tip the fourth axis over and we are stoning the table. Because it's a pretty poor table at the best of times. And um, it will definitely benefit from being stoned because I quickly clocked up the fourth axis and it was actually um, tilted. So an exaggerated, let's just zoom out a bit, in an exaggerated plane, it was like that, pointed downwards. So we're gonna stone the bottom of this, give this a clean up, stone the table, get it bolted back down, and then we're gonna look at getting it shimmed so that before I start doing anything, we are true in um, the Z to the face of the fourth axis and we're true to the Y axis so yeah give this a good stoning down and see how we get on okay so as you see earlier i stoned the table and i've got it as good as i'm going to get positioning wise before we do any other work now i actually pulled off the studs and nothing to do with really what i'm doing but i was holding my full axis down with just some m12 studding now this is just from your local hardware screw fix and that's a really crappy cut thread so really poor and you can see tightening it up um, this one wasn't as bad but the other one he just ripped it because there's no strength in that thread that is as cheap and cheerful as it gets in the shops so I put proper um, bolts in there m12 roll thread hex head bolts so she's secure super tight now when i clocked this up it was um it was sitting backwards a bit so i've had to shim it on the back side underneath and we've clocked it up as straight as we can now to shim it i've used um cigarette paper i didn't have any shim um and even that if anything was a bit too much but this is like the end of the pack. Someone gave me these once um, because the very end of the pack of the cigarette papers evidently um, are waterproof. So you can, if, you, if you're touching off tools, I never used it, but you give them to me thinking that's how I touch off my tools. But most of the time it's on a pro, but I have used them on the lathe. But if this gets a bit wet, put it back on the side, it doesn't go um, soggy like a normal cigarette paper. It's actually dry out and you can use it again. And if you measure these, just see if I'm at zero. Let's just get a bit of paper there. Show you. O3. So compare it to what I've got here. The other thing I had to hand. Oh, was a post-it note. Let's grab one of them. 07, 08, so it's half the thickness of one of those. So that worked perfect. So what I've done, I've run out of hands here. So I've got one of my parallels, a good parallel, and I've cable tied it, pulled it really tight, as hard as I can. I stoned the face of this as well. It's a bit pitted, this table, but um, I stoned the face of it, so it's as good as it's ever gonna be. And then I cable tied it through and put it on a bit of bar at the back because I didn't have enough hands to hold this and do everything like that. So in X, you can see we're at zero. We're actually just off, but we're not um, gonna argue about that. I'm just trying to hold this in my hand and also film at the same time. So I don't know the best way to do this. There you go, I might be able to lean against that. So. We're zero down there, and I can jog up on this parallel and show you that 
we're still good. Now, just to make sure you see that I am actually off, we've got movement both ways. So now what I'll do, I'll just do a jog back down to the centre. And this is quite a good bike to do it all at once. Now in a rotate in the A. So you see I'm still on the parallel. And now we'll get that straight enough across there. Still on zero. And we'll go. In the Y axis, sorry, losing where I'm at. See down there, we might be just off a of zero. So if I'm now at that edge, let me show you that I'm going to center it back up. Come all the way at the other end. And you can see there, I can't get the camera any closer because I'm up against this. But you can see there, we are just off. So we're probably 0 0.005 because each increment on that dial is 0 0.01 millimeters. So that's as good, to put that down now. That's as good as I'm gonna get the fourth axis um, the face of the fourth axis on the table. So we've pulled down tight, we've got the bolts nice and tight so that won't move. And we are as good in Y and as good in Z as we are ever gonna get. I've never done it to that um, precise alignment before. I've always just, for the little parts I do that are maybe like inch and a half, two inches long, and the bits that I've needed to do, I just slap it on there and bolt it down. Just using the key and that's fine. So this is a good way and cable tying that parallel through there actually works really well so that you ain't got to sort of go over because everybody knows if you use the indicator and you keep going over these bumps you can have um, if you go over them too quickly you can jump the indicator a little bit and it won't go back to where it was so that's as good as we're going to get now for the moment I'm going to leave it there and put the cover back over the fourth because we are going to jump back to this piece, sorry, nearly walked past it. And I'm gonna try and pick up, um, excuse me, try and pick up kind of where I left off with this one because I don't wanna to get too jumping ahead of what we're gonna do on the next one. So we were all done on all the sides. This one we'd finished um, to size. We'd actually gone 0.2 under to try and get rid of some of these tool marks. So that flange is actually 0.2 under on the overall dimension, which obviously makes no odds to the part. I just need to bear in mind it's 0.2 under if I ever come off one of them faces. We'd roughed out this side. We'd finished this back face here. And this top face, might as well put it back down here again. We'd roughed out the bores at the inlets and we'd left half a millimetre on this contour. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clamp it back down in the vices in this orientation here. These O-ring channels are finished sizes. So I'm gonna clock off the, off the gap there because I know that's true to the part and I know this back face is true in the X-axis. So I'm kind of picking up awkwardly on this one. So I'll clock off there Make sure I'm true in X in the vices. When that's good, I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna finish this contour down about 20 millimeters. I think it's 15 down from here, 20 odd, 25 if you include the 10 or so up here. But I'll finish this contour with a six mil end mil so that that is done and this will be a finished size because I think this has got 0.5 either side of it. And then once that's done, I'm going to put this back down in the vices as if I'm doing the next part because that's the way I'm going to do the next lot. I'll sit it in the vice and I'm going to clamp it up like that. So I'll use probably one of these parallels um, because they're the longest ones I've got that are decent. I've got a pair of them. 
I'll sit them across this face so it spaces out from this section here. So I'll sit it across there and another one across, clamp on the vise. And obviously we've got a nice face to clamp across on there. Then I'm gonna do our 3D adaptive and finish this side. And then obviously we're gonna to start to see what material, if any more, is missing off of here. And then that will get this one finished. So I just wanted to show you where we're at with the fourth axis though, because of all the comments and all the hassle I had previously to show that it was all out of alignment and not, not where it needs to be. And I was asking you guys how to get about the problems. I didn't want to jump into a video of machining um, back in the vices when you're thinking, hang on a minute, you ain't tackled the other problem yet. So we have tackled just the fourth axis so far and I want to keep the project moving by machining this piece. Once this is done, if I need to weld more material onto here for these sections that I obviously mistakenly machined off, I will do. If I get to the point where I think I've now got enough material and everything is 3D adaptive, it's clear, it's done. The next stop is the trunnion only um, and the bores, etc. And that's when we'll jump back onto making this table good and I'll bring you back with another video. So that's the update now. Another short and sweet video. That's just the line in the full axis on the table. And we'll see you again when we're doing some more machining on the pot. Cheers for watching.